So today we have a 1996 uh, Honda or Acura in North America, NSX. So this one's going to be an NA1. So from 1991 to 1997, they're all going to be, well sorry, to 1996, they're all going to be NA1s. 97 and back are going to be NA2s. And so 1996 means that it has the 3 liter V6 with the 5 speed manual transmission or automatic, which all year NSXs came with automatics if you know if you wanted it um, a lot of people think that na2s are all going to be the open headlights so okay all o2 to o5s are going to be na2s but then na2s actually started from 1997 and so richard's car um, richard decided to let me take his car out to take some photos and I decided i want to do a review on it because the nsx is actually on the top of my list for one of the next cars that i'm going to buy um, so i have three other options four other options that i do want to buy so we'll get to those in other videos um, but you see that Richard's car is going to be a, a target top. It's missing the center. We took that off. Uh, so it's a little bit different than the coupe. It's not as stiff, but then some people decide that if you do well at the top closed, it would be stiffer. But I'm going to give you a couple reasons on why this car is one of my favorites. And uh, as we see here, his car is not stock. It's been modified, but it's nothing over the top like my style, because obviously if it was my style, I'd you know, have a wide body on it. Um, but anyways, as we see here, um, we're going to have a advanced front lip. So it's all going to be JDM parts, quote unquote. Um, and then we have the C28 SLs front and back. So it's going to be a uh, staggered setup. And then the impact side skirts on the side. And then there's going to be these uh, intake scoops here for uh, that you know bulge out a little bit more than the stock ones. And then on the inside, we have downforce seats. So it's going to be the carbon Kevlar. And then he's going to have the Type R mesh on the shifter um, with a dolly racing uh, shift knob. Works well, quick, quick release setup, which I put my steering wheel on because he has a 350 and I'm too tall for his setup, so I can't drive um, if I don't have the 330. And then he's going to ha also have the O2 valence in the rear. So that's going to be, you know, some of the exterior differences um, and also that um, O2 or Type R styled wing in the back there because all the NSXs came with flat ones that had a really long tail light. So now I'm going to take you guys for a drive in this and then you guys will get to see how it sounds and then I'll give you a review on the transmission. So let's go. So now we're on the driving portion of driving the NSX. So this car is a very driver's oriented car. Um, you know, your visibility, like they said, it was like the uh, the F-16 cockpit, like a fighter jet cockpit, and if you, you know, you can see that the A-pillar isn't very thick, so it doesn't blind your visibility very much, and then even with the mirrors, this B-pillar isn't too much of a hassle, and then with the, uh, with the rear hatch, with the engine being in the rear, you get that rear view, you can see the motor behind you, granted this is a target top, so uh, the target top is placed above the engine when you have it off. So this car redlines at 8,000, um, so it's, you know, Whoa, what the we got a beer. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> okay, that was, okay, we'll, uh, we'll put that in the bloopers, but... Anyways, so this car has power steering. So the earlier models of NSXs um, don't have power steering. So that even though this car does have power steering, the uh, steering feel is still very direct. Um, where you point at the car, you know, for the most part does go where you point it. Um, although the steering ratio is a little, you know, high. It's not as, it's a little slow. It's not as fast as S2000 is. The transmission itself in comparison to the S2000 is still very notchy. And you can see it's very short. And paired with that Jay's racing exhaust, and, you know, it sounds great. So basically where you point it, it does go, but 
this car, you know, if you set it up with a rear wing with no front splitter, it will have a tendency to understeer, but that's really only if you're going to the track. I mean, like we are cruising now, it's absolutely fine. There's no issue with that. Um, so, a lot of modern day cars have, you know, electronic stability control, uh, launch control, you know, all sorts of things um, to help you to assist the driver. But in this car, there's really no, you know, nothing assisting you. There is traction control, but it is very old. So what it does is it basically just cuts power on the car uh, so that, you know, the tires can't spin anymore. Um, just going across this bridge. So one thing that NA1s, uh, or well, US spec NA1s come with is the five-speed transmission. But the five speed is very long. You will see that if you're in first gear B Tech and then you go to second gear, um, there will be, it will drop out of B Tech range because they created that, uh, the final gear for, well, the gearing basically for US highway speeds. And, uh, you know, well, we drive fast here, so driving 60, 70, and in California, you drive 80, so. The gearing is very long, so one very popular modification to this car is to add a final gear, a JDM final gear, uh, or the Type R final gear, or actually just change to the short gears as well. So that's why you'll see that I'm not shifting necessarily as much as I would shift in an S2000, because the gears obviously aren't as short. And S2000 has, especially mine, mine has a very, you know, short of a gearing ratio. It has a 4.57 final gear paired with the AP2, but the AP2 uh, has more torque and it has a lower red line. So thus the gears are gonna be a little bit shorter, um, and shorter than the AP1 ones anyways, because the AP1 revs all the way out to nine. And this car back five years ago, no, not five years ago, but 10 years ago, 10 years ago that car was, it was selling for maybe, you know, you can find a good example for like 20, 25,000. And it was the same with the E30 M3, 911s, you know, 930 turbos, all those kind of things. But then, you know, as we got into the more modern age where all these cars are like the GTR, where there's so many electronics and computers helping you drive and making, not even being a, you know, you're not even a fast driver, it's a fast car, you know? Um, and so there's a lot of people out here that want, you know, to have a driver's car, to enjoy driving, to be connected with the car. And that's what this car is. That's what the S2000 is. That's what, you know, Integra Type R's. That's what the, all these cars are. So that's why, you know, all these cars are raising up in value. I mean, come on, think about it. Like, an S2000 originally sold for 40K, and now you have examples going for 70, 80,000 on, you know, bring a trailer or those auctions. And it's really because this car is just, you know, all these cars, they're never gonna make them ever again. These are really the last of its kind. So if you, you know, if you want one of these cars, you better buy it now because they're not going to drop. And if you have one, you know, if you sell it, you're most likely going to regret it. And this car is definitely something that I want to buy. Just the looks, you know, the driving experience. Like, you know, I could buy a 458 or I could buy a newer supercar. I mean, granted, I can't afford it right now, but, you know, it's not the same. Unless it has a manual transmission, it's, there's something missing. Like... You, you can enjoy driving, but it's the feel is not the same. Um, and in many ways, you know, we're gonna we're eventually gonna move into a phase where our children are not gonna have these kind of cars to drive. You know, they not they don't have to learn how to drive manual. And even now, there's a lot of people born, you know, in 2000s and later, and they don't know how to drive manual, which is just something that's you know I feel is pretty sad. But you know, that's just how the world changes. You know, sometimes you. Technology changes, we have phones, we have all these things. And, you know, if you like this very short review on why this car is appreciating, you know, obviously subscribe to my channel here. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these videos. And if there are certain cars that you guys do want to see, let me know. Um, and then we will do our best to uh, obviously accommodate you in making that video for you. And shout out to my new videographer <laughs> who's sitting with me right now. Um, obviously we'll have his Instagram here and then um, we'll have Richard's as well and then if you guys do like the video obviously like and subscribe and then we will catch you guys next time on the next video. Bye!